On behalf of 24HourAnswers.com, I welcome you to today's lesson. In this video, we're going to look at continuity and we're going to be doing this based on a graphical approach. And before we jump into what I call the continuity checklist, let's look at this graph over here. It's several pieces that make up this piecewise function. And really, when it all comes down to it, continuity, if you're looking at a graph, if you can take your pen or pencil and if you can trace along the curve and you never have to pick up your pen or pencil, the function's continuous through that interval. But notice when I hit right here, when x is 2, I can't color that dot in because it's an open circle. That is a discontinuity there. And for us to continue along this curve, we'd have to pick up our pen, come here, pick up our pen again, and then continue along. This is a discontinuity. There are two types of discontinuities, removables and non-removables. We will discuss those in a future video as well. So again, if I keep tracing along here, when I hit this spot, I do not have to pick up my pen because I can just continue right on along and I'm emphasizing that with that closed dot there. And then as I trace along here all the way up to here, again, I would have to pick up my pen to continue along the curve there. So with that said, we got this continuity checklist over here. We technically have already identified the spots where this f of x is not continuous. Those spots are when x is 2 because we have to pick up our pen to continue along the curve. And also when x is equal to 8 because we have to pick up our pen from here to here to continue along the curve. Now let's look at these questions down here. And then also let's have a look at this checklist. Is f of x continuous at the given x values? Well, let's go to where x is negative 2. So where x is negative 2, we're right here on the curve. And if we just kind of trace a line across there, we never have to pick up our pen. So it is continuous there. What about when x equals 0? When x equals 0, right here, yeah, there's something going on, but still, we can trace our pen right on along through there. When x is 0, right down here, x is 0. We can keep our pen going just fine. We never have to pick it up. So yes, it is continuous there as well. What about when x equals 2? When x equals 2, that was one of those spots where I said we had to pick up our pen to continue along the curve. Now, let's address this checklist over here. This is the technical way of talking about a function being continuous. So we're talking about an x equals 2. Let's ask ourselves uh, this question here. Number one on our checklist, is f of 2 defined? Checklist number one, so f of c, this f of 2. Sure it is. When x is 2, our y value is 3 at that closed dot. So therefore, f of 2 is equal to 3. Does the function exist as x approaches 2? From earlier videos, we talked about a left-handed limit and a right-handed limit. If the left-handed limit is equal to the right-handed limit, the limit does exist. Well, let's talk about the limit here. As we get close to this x value of 2, it looks like our y value is actually approaching 2, right? And the same thing from the right-hand side. So the left-handed limit approaches 2. The right-handed limit approaches this y value of 2. So yes, the limit does exist. This limit is actually equal to 2. Here's where the continuity checklist fails. Because these two pieces that we got here, f of c or f of 2 we said was 3, and the limit is 2. For a function to be continuous at a particular x value, in this case 2, these two values have to be equal. And as we can see here, the function was defined at 3, the limit was 2, they're not equal. Therefore, if we want to explain where the continuity checklist fails, we would say it fails at number 3 in this case. So that's what I want to emphasize for these problems where we do have discontinuities in our graph. You have to check all three of these pieces. And I, I mean, they may not be in that particular order in your book, but I'm pretty sure this third one is going to be something remotely similar to this. But basically, you have to ask yourself three questions. Is the function defined? If it's not, it's not continuous, period. Uh, number two, does the limit exist? Good. Number three, are those two things that we just addressed equal to each other? And if all three of these things are true, then your function is continuous. If one of these is not true, your function is not continuous at that particular x value that we can call c. So now, moving along to 5, x equals 5, right here. 
Well, if we go through our checklist, we've already said earlier that this was continuous because we can just continue tracing right along our curve when x hits 5. But let's notice that f of 5 is equal to what? f of 5 is equal to negative 1. What about the limit? As we approach 5 from the left-hand side and as we approach 5 from the right-hand side, we're approaching the same y value of negative 1. So the limit does exist. And now notice that the function's value at 5 and the limit as x approaches 5, they're both equal. And notice our continuity checklist works just fine here. So therefore, at x equals 5, the function is continuous. And in this case, I used a continuity checklist. But again, in all honesty, if you can just trace along the curve, yeah, there's something weird going on here in terms of differentiation and stuff like that. We're not ready for that yet, but we do want to talk about continuity here before we move forward. And then our last example, what about at x equals 8? Well, let's go through our continuity checklist. Is the function defined at 8? What is f of 8 equal to? In this particular example, the function is defined when x equals 8, right here f of 8 is actually equal to 8 in this case. Number 2 is where our checklist is going to fail because the limit, as we approach 8, the limit does not exist because the left-handed limit is not equal to the right-handed limit. We are approaching two different y values as we come from the left and as we come from the right. So since the number 2 piece, the limit does not exist, we say the function is not continuous at that particular x value. So therefore, we will say, no, the function is not continuous, and it fails because of condition number two, because the limit does not exist. Now, I don't have an example up here of where number one would be messed up, but I can show you something in, in lieu of that. If we come back here and I erase that dot where x is two, that will change this answer. So I do want to emphasize that to you. If we did not have that piece there, we would have a problem right here at the very beginning where checklist number one. So what about when x equals two now that I've erased that closed circle? Is f of two defined? So now that I've erased that closed dot there, the function is not defined when x is equal to two. Therefore, this case here, if I erase that closed dot like I did, number one would fail in this example. So I did want to emphasize that to you as well. You know, when could number one fail? That's just when you have a function that's not defined at a particular value. And again, I modified that by taking away that closed circle. So there you have it. That's a continuity graphical approach. And again, we did it hit on these three pieces to our checklist. But when it boils down to it, if you have a graph, just ask yourself, do I have to pick up my pen at a particular value to continue along the curve? Yes, we would have to do it at two. And yes, we would have to do it at eight. And those are the two spots where our function is discontinuous. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for more videos. Links to our social media are in the description below.